Summary of Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. The main plot of the story takes place over 14 weeks in the late summer and fall of 1995. It starts when the narrator, Mitch, learns that Maury, his beloved college sociology professor, is dying of ALS. When Mitch's newspaper union goes on strike, he loses his job for a long time. To make up for it, he drives from Detroit to Maury's house outside of Boston every Tuesday for what he calls his final class with Maury. In the end, his argument is the whole book. He grew up in New York, and his family didn't have much money. When Maury was nine years old, his mother got sick and died. This event would stay with him for the rest of his life. His father, Charlie, wasn't very loving, and Maury had a hard time for two years until his dad got married again. Eva, his stepmother, was nice and loved him. Maury needed love very badly, and she gave it to him. She also made him love learning. Maury's father tried to get him a job in a fur business but failed, so Maury chose to become a teacher. At the start of each chapter, Mitch talks about his friendship with Maury when they were both in college. With the start of his first year of college at Brandeis University in 1976, Mitch met Maury in his first sociology class. Mitch was one of the youngest kids, but he made up for it by acting tough. Maury, on the other hand, was compassionate and kind to him, and they became very trusting as teacher and student. Maury talked Mitch into writing an honors thesis about the culture of football. Mitch told his professor at graduation that he'd stay in touch, but he didn't. Mitch came to New York after high school to follow his dream of becoming a famous piano player. It did not work out for him. His favorite uncle, who died of pancreatic cancer while Mitch was living there, had an apartment next door to him. Mitch is upset about his uncle's death, so he thinks he doesn't need to waste any more time. He gets a degree in journalism, moves to Detroit, and starts working as a sports writer. Even though Mitch is very wealthy, he isn't really happy with his life. In his 60s, Maury's health starts to get worse because his asthma starts to make his life harder. He loves to dance, but he has to stop when it gets hard for him to breathe and he starts to fall. As his condition worsens, doctors do a number of tests and, in 1994, they find that Maury has ALS. In the fall, he teaches his last class at Brandeis. In the spring, he does the first of three interviews with Ted Koppel on Nightline. While Koppel is polite, he is not warm. Mitch sees the talk on TV in Detroit and decides to go see Maury. Even though Maury, who is now in a wheelchair, is happy to see Mitch, Mitch finds their first visit awkward and uncomfortable because he knows that he is not the kind and hopeful student that Maury knew in college. That makes Mitch feel even worse when Maury offers to tell him what it's like to die. When people ask Mitch how happy he is with his life, he has a hard time answering because he knows he's not. He tells Maury again before he leaves that he'll come back and see her. When Mitch goes to the UK to cover Wimbledon, he can't help but think about Maury the whole time. His newspaper group goes on strike the day after he gets back to Detroit. He calls Maury and asks to come back to see her after being idle for a week. After thinking how much Maury loves food, Mitch brings food with him at the start of this visit and every visit after that. Mitch feels uncomfortable again when Maury starts to cry as he talks about how he feels so much more about death in the world now that he is dying himself. Mitch is going to learn that it's okay to cry, Maury says. Mitch starts to help Maury's nurse, Connie, take care of her over the next few Tuesdays. He feels awful the first time he moves Maury from his wheelchair to his couch because of the disease. Maury has become like dead weight, which bothers him. After that, he starts to bring tape recorders and a list of things he wants to talk about with Maury so that he will always be remembered. This is what Maury really wants. He began writing down wise words about life in the shadow of death after he learned he was going to die. That's why he wants to teach everyone about life, death, and how to really live. I think Ted Koppel is much nicer in Maury's second talk with him, and Maury's fame grows even more after it airs. Mitch and Maury talk about death every fourth Tuesday, and Maury shares some of his knowledge about how to make your own culture by drawing from different religions. 
It sounds like he's just now becoming aware of how much he loves nature as the end of the world draws near. Mitch starts to understand by the next visit that Maury wants to talk to people more and more as the sickness gets worse. It's important for him that his armchair and microphone for the tape player are always set so that he can be relaxed. We then talk about how important family is, and Mitch tells the reader that his brother Peter lives in Spain and is fighting the same type of pancreatic cancer that killed his uncle. Maury's health gets worse every Tuesday after this one. He stops being able to go to the bathroom alone and stop being able to eat solid food. Even though he can't sleep well because he's coughing, he still wants to see guests. Charlotte, his wife, tells Mitch that their trips give Maury a reason to live even though he is sick. Maury and Mitch talk about how Maury is living with being more dependent on others by letting go of fear and other negative feelings. He also talks about how he stays positive about getting older because he thinks it is a process of growth rather than decay. By the eighth Tuesday, Maury has had many bad days and some good ones, but he still thinks it's more important to make people happy than to make money. Mitch's wife, Janine, goes with him to see Maury on the 10th Tuesday. Even though Mitch doesn't expect her to, she agrees to sing for Maury when he asks. Maury can connect with anyone, and he and Janine get along like they've known each other for a long time. Then Maury talks about his feelings about marriage and why so many people in Mitch's group get divorced. Having kindness and understanding for one's partner and the value of love are at the heart of his ideas. The next week, Mitch is even more active in taking care of Maury. He pounds on his back to help loosen the mucus in his lungs. Mitch's walls are slowly coming down thanks to Maury's help. He is becoming more sensitive and caring, and he is focusing less on work. Even though Maury already has his own culture, Mitch is encouraged to make his own by taking parts of other cultures and religions that he finds useful. Maury's culture helps him focus on his friendships and family, which he thinks is even more important now that he knows he is going to die soon. Koppel and Maury talk like friends during his last interview for Nightline the following week. It is more than just an interview, it is a sad farewell. A few days later, when Mitch comes to visit, Maury tells him about a close friend who wasn't there for him when Charlotte got sick, and they stop talking to each other after that. The friend died of cancer a few years ago, and Maury feels terrible that they never got back in touch. He also tells Mitch that he would want another kid to be Mitch if he had one. In the following week, Mitch asks Maury to explain the perfect day. What Maury says is surprisingly ordinary. He tells Mitch that he should try to make things right with his brother, who is still sick with cancer and won't answer the phone when his family calls. When Mitch comes back in the 14th week, Maury is sick and in bed. Both Mitch and Maury cry when they say goodbye. The next Saturday, Maury dies, and Mitch goes to the funeral. With only a few people, the service is held in a lovely park on a Tuesday, which Mitch thinks is a good choice. Not long after that, Mitch is able to get in touch with his brother, and it looks like they will be able to get back together in the future. About the author Mitch Album was born in Passaic. Family relocated to Oakland, New Jersey. After learning to play the piano on his own as a child, Album played in a number of bands while he was a teenager. He didn't finish his senior year of high school because he went to Brandeis University and got his BA in sociology there in 1979. He played music for a short time in Europe and New York City. Then he became interested in writing, which led him to get a master's in writing from Columbia University and then an MBA from the same school. He moved to Detroit, Michigan, in 1985 and became famous across the country as a sports reporter for newspapers, TV, and radio. In 1995, he married Janine. That same year, he got back in touch with Maury Schwartz, who used to be his professor at Brandeis. This led to the writing of Tuesdays with Maury, which became a hit. Album has written a number of other books with similar themes since Tuesdays with Maury. One of these is The Five People You Meet in Heaven. More than that, he started eight organizations, most of which help people in the Detroit area. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.